Hi, it's Dwyer. December the 19th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in gambling, there's the concept called variance. On most days, let's say an athlete is above average. But athletes with high variance on some days are remarkable. Right? So you may remember in an earlier generation, giant quarterback Phil Simms, a decent quarterback, showing up in a Super Bowl and being an absolute world beater against the Denver Broncos. Right? In track and field, you, want, you might remember Bob Beeman setting the world record. You might remember Mike Powell breaking that world record in the long jump with jumps that the men themselves didn't come close to duplicating the rest of their careers. Right? In baseball, Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan was a guy who had a lot of walks. There's never a year in Nolan Ryan's career where you thought that Nolan Ryan was the best pitcher in the major leagues. But yet on some nights, Nolan Ryan could go out there and throw no-hitters, right? He ends his career with seven no-hitters, more than anyone else in history, right? More than Koufax, more than Bob Gibson, more than Randy Johnson, right? More than the workhorses we know about. Now, in boxing, there have been a lot of great heavyweight champions. Just think of the last half century, right? You'd be very hard-pressed, very hard-pressed, to find a better performance than Riddick Bowe's performance in his first fight against Evander Holyfield. Right? Riddick Bowe, when he was inspired, was as good as anyone. Right? Bo couldn't keep it going. Was so bad in training, think about it, that his trainer, a Hall of Fame trainer who was the mentor to Freddie Roach, who was the trainer for Joe Fraser, right? Eddie Futch gave up on training the heavyweight champion. But even though that happened, you can't take away Bo's best performances. Now, arguably the best fighter in the sport today, Terrence Crawford, was the most hurt he was in a professional match against Yorkies Gamboa. Now, I'm not here to say that Yorkies Gamboa is an all-time great fighter. I'm not here to say that at all. Right? But what I'm here to say is that Yorkies Gamboa, on the right night, is awfully hard to beat. The question for his fight against Gervonta Davis is whether Gamboa, at 37, can bring his A game. Right? 37. Let's be clear. Gamboa's last fight against Rocky Martinez was a bit of an illusion, wasn't it? Because, number one, Martinez was an older fighter like Gamboa. Number two, they were both coming back from layoffs. Right? In other words, you know, when you're looking at an old-timers game in baseball, you understand that regardless of how good the old-timers look against each other, they might not be competitive against players currently in their prime. Right? The question, looking at the Gamboa, Rocky Martinez film, is whether those guys would be competitive against prime fighters. Now, if you believe the answer is yes, like I do, 
than the bet I'm recommending. And understand, this is just an odds play. In other words, the odds are so compelling that they've pulled me off the sidelines. Right? The bet I'm recommending is Yorkies Gamboa. I want you to look at the line and look at it carefully. At nine and a half to one. Right? Let me just tell you, there was a time in boxing where the idea of getting Yorkies Gamboa at odds like this was simply unthinkable. Now he's 37. Now his generation has left the stage somewhat. Right? The athletes he went up against, many of them, are now raising families. They're no longer doing road work. They're no longer in the game. 37, at heavyweight, you're just starting out. At the lighter weights, you're practically in a senior center. Right? At 37, the question is whether Yorkies Gamboa can turn back the clock. On an odds play, because I believe it's either going to be feast or famine. Either a competitive Gamboa shows up, or he doesn't. The bet I'm recommending is your keys Gamboa. Nine and a half to one to win the fight. Hedged with Gervonta Davis. Unbeaten. Fearless, because he's too young to know about his own mortality by knockout. Right? If your keys can turn back the clock, here's what you're going to see. Gamboa with faster hands than Davis. Much faster hands. Gamboa with better movement. Davis is a stalker. Has a stiff leg. Right? Gamboa is fluid. Gamboa, big puncher who got Terrence Crawford in trouble, just couldn't land that extra punch. Right? Gamboa can actually pivot and throw punches on the move. In my opinion, far better than Gravante Davis. Gamboa, better athlete. Now understand, this gets tricky when you're older. This gets tricky when you're 37. If you're a man of a certain age, right, there are times where you're at the pickup game, at the park. You're in against some younger guy, right, playing basketball. And you understand that with a full tank, you can do more than the younger guy. You can outmaneuver him. Those loose balls, you can get there first. But then somewhere along the line, somewhere in the athletic contest, you start to realize that the stamina you had in your 20s that would have made the matchup an absolute mismatch in your favor is no longer there. So you have a full tank, but you've got to shepherd that full tank, right? You can't go out and just play. You have to go out, play, and then say to yourself, okay, I got to take a few plays off, right? Okay, I have to make decisions. I see this young guy a few feet away from me about to take a jumper. How good do I think his jumper is, right? When you're in your 20s, you just go out there to guard him. When you're in your mid to late 30s and higher, you're playing percentages. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to run out there. I'm going to save my legs on this play. This guy hasn't shown me that he's Steph Curry from out there. Right? This guy, <laughs> this guy hasn't shown me that he's Bradley Beal from out there. So I'm going to take I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to let some things slide. In boxing parlance, I'm going to take some rounds off. 
Right now, it might shock some people. I know Davis is one of the biggest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. Right? Davis packs a wallop. Davis has beaten more skilled men. Revisit the Jose Pedraza fight. Right? Davis has one advantage on Pedraza. It's power. He uses that to beat down Pedraza. But understand, here's the irony of this fight. If you're a fan of Yorkis Gamboa, and I know many of his recent fights have gone the distance, but you know, I'm sure Terence Crawford knows this, Gamboa packs a punch. If Gamboa has a full tank, folks, it's awfully hard awfully hard to figure out who the puncher in this fight's gonna be. Right? And the storm clouds are out on Gervonta Davis. Understand. Right? In the last few days, you've had an older fighter, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. unable to make weight at 168 for his fight against Danny Jacobs. Right? Because Jacobs wants the fight to come off because Chavez Jr. is a box office cow. They quietly reworked the contract. I'm not kidding. Right? He couldn't make 168. They said, okay, well, we'll make the contract for 173. <laughs> right? that's, that's what they did. By the way, at the weigh-in, Danny Jacobs comes in at 167.9 pounds. Right? Chavez Jr. in a very important fight for his career. Right? He's at that crossroads. Came in a little bit less than 173 pounds. In other words, he was almost 5 pounds over the 168 pound weight limit. Now for older guys, okay, we understand. The metabolism slowed down. Life has kind of softened up the older fighter a bit. Right? When you're young, you're thinking, man, I'm prepared to die in the ring. When you're older, you're looking at your kids. You're looking at your wife. And you're thinking to yourself, you know what? If, if I'm at the state of the match, the boxing match, where I'm thinking there's a possibility that I could get badly hurt, I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to tell my corner, hey, I can't continue. Maybe if I get knocked down and I look up and I'm seeing two of the referees. When you're a young guy, you're getting up and you're bluffing, right? You're thinking, man, this fight means too much. I'm still hungry. When you're an older fighter, you stay down. Right now, Gravante Davis is interesting. Because already there have been stories trickling out for some of his past fights about a lack of focus in training. About weight problems. And things like that. Player, you're too young to have those. Right? I mean, the guys who are supposed to have problems making weight and stuff like that are the guys like Chavez Jr. Guys who were champs for years. Right? Guys who you know, now have the money in the bank account. In fact, Chavez Jr. comes from money. Right? Dad's a Hall of Famer. You show me the guy in his 20s who's having weight problems and you're hearing about a lack of focus and stuff like that. Then you see him in the ring and it's, you know, big punches and he's getting out of there without really being tested. What's the Gervonta Davis fight where you're up in the 10th round, the 11th round? The championship rounds. And he needs to draw the line to convince the judges and more importantly to convince you that he deserves the fight. What fight is that? Right? So, you look at your key Scamboa who's fought and who's beaten. People like Orlando Salido. You might know him if you're a Lomachenko fan. He's the one who gave Lomachenko the loss. Right? Yorkis Gamboa, quite frankly, has been in the ring 
with better than Gervonta Davis. How do we know that? Because one of the people he was in the ring with, Terrence Crawford, is better than Gervonta Davis during Davis's prime. Right, so, I know there are going to be some people, if Davis comes out and does what Davis does, right, somehow makes weight, is in the fight, hits a guy with a left hook, and life changes, right? The guy is struggling, somehow muscles guys over to the ropes. Why does that seem to happen in every Davis fight, right? Muscles a guy over to the ropes, destroys the guy. Right? The guy might get off the canvas, the referee comes over, the guy's been so destroyed, the guy's thinking about his wife and kids. He's not, he's not going to continue fighting. Right? The ref says you want to continue, the guy gives that glazed look. I believe some fighters who do that, do that intentionally. Right? You understand, damn, this guy hits hard. You get off the canvas, you're a little woozy. You know, if the guy didn't hit that hard, maybe you'd say to the ref, hey, I'm okay. But the guy hits so hard, you're thinking, you know what, okay, uh, I've gotten a payday on this. I'll just, you know, have this bad day end right here. Right? So, if Davis wins the fight, I know there are a bunch of you who are going to say, hey, Dwyer, you were wrong on this one, and blah, 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 right? You were wrong betting against a better than 10 to 1 favorite. <laughs> Okay, fine. Just understand, if Davis wins by KO, you're covered. The whole point of the bet is to get a taste of the plus 950 on Gamboa while protecting yourself by having the hedge of Davis by KO. Right? But don't kid yourself. In my opinion, Yorkie's Gamboa is going to be the sentimental favorite in this fight. If this fight makes it to the championship rounds, and Gamboa is still on his feet with a chance to win the fight. By the way, Gamboa has been in the championship rounds several times. If you're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, if Gamboa is competing against the young champion and still has a chance to win the fight. Don't kid yourself, Davis is not that loved. He's not Manny Pacquiao. The judges are not going to give him close championship round scoring. Right? People of a certain age remember Yorkies Gamboa. He's the sentimental favorite in this fight. If this fight goes the distance, I think the guy with the faster hands and the better movement, and understand, Gamboa is two-handed. Understand, Gamboa moves in a way where he doesn't have a stiff leg. Understand, Gamboa wants you to try to track him down. Look at Gamboa's last fight against Rocky Martinez, right? He wants Martinez to engage with him. Gamboa moves. He's not there to run. Let me also say, if Davis gets sloppy, he might find himself sitting on the canvas. Gamboa still has punching power. So to sum up, of all the matches this weekend, and there are a lot of them out there that are intriguing. Right? The Harrison Charlo rematch. Danny Jacobs' entry at 168 against 173 pound Julio Cesar Chavez. Right? Of all the interesting fights coming up here, this one where you're getting Yorkies Gamboa at a plus 950 against a young guy who doesn't box as well as he does is the one that has my attention. I like Gamboa at the plus 950. Understand, betting's high risk. You get lucky on this fight, wow. 
<laughs> That's all I can say. No other fight this weekend is giving you odds like this on a fighter as decorated as this. Didn't Gamboa win the gold medal in the Olympics? Isn't he a former champion? The idea of Yorkies Gamboa at plus 950 hedged with Gervonta Davis doing what he does best, winning by knockout is the fight that has my attention. That's the hedge I like, but I want you to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if Gervonta Davis, who is very well connected in boxing, who is viewed as one of the futures of boxing, who, if he continues his unbeaten run, has a lot of big paydays ahead of him. If Gervonta Davis wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. That's the risk involved. Gamboa simply the winner to plus 950 hedged with Davis by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.